Everything good to go? I think, I think we're good, yeah. Okay. Well, actually, let me check the vault. Thank you, Alberto. Um, yeah, and Marstela and Benedito were really, without their help, they were extremely uh, hospitable that they let me use their home until I could find a place to stay for myself and put, introduced me to a lot of people. So much of this is thanks to them. So, <clears throat> um, And I should stress, uh, I should also say that um, I, I used the Tinker Nave uh, uh, funding for a month in the field. So this is all very new and uh, both my ideas and these just my uh, knowledge is it's a work in progress so I just appreciate all of your uh, comments and questions at the end to help me develop this. <clears throat> Maranhão is a land of enchantment. No this is not the Maranhense Ministry of Tourism's ag advertising slogan but rather a commonly used phrase by Maranhenses themselves to describe the varying types of magic, myth, and religious practice that are important markers of the state for its citizens. Enchantment, religious symbology, and myths as popular ways of knowing and seeing the world take center stage in the cultural manifestations of Maranhão as well. The importance of music traditions in, in the negotiation of Maranhense cultural identity evokes the root meaning of the word enchantment from the Latin words to sing and into. <clears throat> in a sense, is the practice of these musical cultural traditions themselves that enchant the land as they renew the myths and ideas that set it apart as distinct and special worthy of local pride and foreign interest. As such, dance and music traditions that once were performed primarily as recreation and social commentary have been reframed over several decades of tourist development into popular spectacles and sites for marginalized populations, as well as middle-class Marinances, to demonstrate their cultural citizenship. <clears throat> Bumbumel Boy, an intricate theater, dance, and music complex, and this here is a masquerade called the uh, Kazumba, 
that is uh, uh, one of the, the, the religious symbols of Bumbu Male Boy. And Tambor Kriju Creole, and this is, you see, uh, a drummer playing the Tambor Granji, which I'll talk about in a little bit, and uh, a, a dancer here. <clears throat> Tambor de Creole, which is a circle dance with queer African heritage. Both have become performed and celebrated by members of a variety of regional and class-defined subgroups within Maranhão. As the Brazilian constitution written in 1988, after the end of the Brazilian dictatorship, explicitly marked culture as a right for all citizens, a number of government initiatives have and continue to both provide resources to and encourage cultural, uh, excuse me, uh, <clears throat> to both provide resources to encourage cultural development, as well as use culture as a political resource. In addition, corporations and NGOs are currently working in Maranhão to organize festivals, performances, and other opportunities for participation in cultural performances. <clears throat> to do this, they both draw upon the knowledge of and ostensibly better the lives of marginalized populations. During this talk, I will map out some of the interactions between the state, private corporations and NGOs, and performers from different social economic groups in the capital city of Sao Luis. Based on my own research, including an initial exploratory trip to Maranhão that I conducted this winter, I will point to some of the routes of inquiry that I plan to take as I continue to develop this project. <clears throat> the term cultura popular appears not only in academic publications in Maranhão, but on the tongues of singers performing newly created tawadas or call and response songs, setting the boy and his entourage or the twirling tambour dancers into motion. Viva a cultura popular do Maranhão is a common refrain for participants in a variety of cultural forms, also including the Brazilian martial art capoeira, the localized form of samba, uh, and the localized form of samba, but especially tambor de criola and bumbo male boy. This local understanding of popular culture comes largely from the work of Sergio Fehechi, <clears throat> a Brazilian anthropologist who has worked in the field of syncretism and Afro-Brazilian culture uh, for the better part of his 40-year his, uh, career at the University, uh, the Federal University of Marnia. Fahechi, echoing Nestor Garcia Canclini's discussion of popular culture in Latin America, put forward in the 70s and 80s a notion of Marniense cultura popular as a space between the folkloric, which he argued was a primary, uh, primary label attached to the culture of the lower classes, and mainstream popular music and entertainment. Much of Hehechi's work is concerned with the recognition that the populations that have maintained these traditions throughout Brazilian history have been and continue to be marginalized and impoverished. <clears throat> this is despite the recent recognition of the value of their this is despite the recent recognition of the value of their cultural contributions. Around that same time, in the in the uh, mainly in the 70s and the early 80s, community organizations such as Labor Archi, who we see here, this is a, a Tambor Jigola class that this group, Labor Lab Archi, uh, puts on weekly, began performing shows and giving classes in music, dance, capoeira, and other cultural forms as a way to foment interclass participation and further develop a distinctly Maranhense popular culture. While Labor Archi and other groups advocating for popular culture were not overtly political, their use of these traditions implied a critique against the uh, status, status quo and even the, the dictatorship, especially the marginalization of poor Brazilians of native and African descent in the Northeast. More recently, Canclini has complicated this notion of the popular as a distinction between what is popular or from the popular classes and what is not, instead framing it as a constant negotiation. He states, quote, the culturally hybrid features resulting from, from cross-class cross interaction force us to recognize that alongside struggle, there is also negotiation. Negotiation is located within collective subjectivity in the most unconscious uh, culture of politics and daily life. Its hybrid character, which in Latin America derives from a long history of mixtures and secretisms, is accentuated in contemporary societies through complex interactions between the traditional and the modern, the popular and the elite, the subaltern and the hegemonic. In her formulation of cultural citizenship, Aiwa Ong critiques the overtly simplistic model uh, that has been used in the past in which culture serves as a means for inclusion in the nation for marginalized populations. In other words, other people are actually included upon the merit of the otherness of their culture. Instead, like Ken Queenie, she posits an ongoing negotiation between the state and the subject based on the culture and race of, and, and created, socially created race of marginalized subjects such as immigrants or other racial minorities to determine the contours of citizenship for these groups. I'm currently working towards mapping out these types of negotiation between the state and other powerful sectors 
with some of the poor racialized populations of Maranyao in using their culture both as a means of enrichment of the state and a means for their inclusion in its cultural politics. <clears throat> the complex tradition of Bumbumel Boy is most frequently performed just before, during, and after the month of June, when the Catholic festivals termed the Festas Juninas, which uh, Alberto mentioned earlier, are celebrated. Bumbumel Boy consists of both a complex group of musical, dance, and dramatic performances, and also an extremely detailed material culture comprised of ornate costume, masks, and musical instruments. And here we see the Coro du Boy, the skin of the bull, which this, you can see this has so joao, and this was, tw this was for 2014 for the group Boy du Maracana. So we have the World Cup here with the, uh, you know, there's also the somewhere Maracana is also the name of the, the stadium in Rio, even though in this case, Boy du Maracana is a municipal municipality of Sao Luis of the, uh, so, um, and then we have, of course, the, uh, the Virgin Mary and uh, baby Jesus, and Sao Joao, who is the patron saint of the bull. And each of these, these are all, this is all a mosaic of tiny little beads. So it is, a ridic it is a ridiculous amount of work that goes into this months and months. <clears throat> By way of an introduction to, to Bumbumel Boy, I would like to briefly summarize the Alto de Boy, or the plot of the tradition's dramatical element. While there are many variations, here is one of the most common basic versions. Pai Francisco and Mai Cacilina are slaves in colonial era Brazil. Their master, simply known in this case as the Amo do Boi, um, owns a beautiful bull that dances and evokes songs of admiration from his owner. Yet Cacilina, who is pregnant, is struck with an insatiable craving for bull tongue that can only be satisfied by the tongue of the prize bull. Francisco prote protests, knowing the consequences, but eventually gives in for fear that his wife's desire, for, for fear that if his wife's desire goes unfulfilled, their child will die. He kills the bull and Cacirina is satisfied. Once the Amo finds his bull slaughtered, he sends his hired hands, called caboclos, which in this case, uh, it can have a variety, that word can have a variety of meanings. In this case, it, it mainly just means uh, people of native, native Brazilian descent who have, who have been incorporated into the plantation culture. Um, <clears throat> so he sends these caboclos to apprehend whoever committed the crime. The caboclos catch Francisco and return him to the Amo, who agrees that Francisco must resurrect the bull or face the consequences. After seeking the help of a doctor and a priest, both of whom were unsuccessful, Francisco is ready to face the consequences. However, before he can be punished, uh, a group of curanderos or, or pages, which is basically just a, mean for, a name for indigenous healer, um, very generic uh, in, in regional Portuguese, um, arrive to aid him, and they successfully revive the bull. The Amu pardons Chico and declares a day of celebration for all involved. Even in this simple summary of a drama that can stretch for hours into the night, there is much to unpack. Past studies on Bumbumel Boy, including the seminal work of Maranhense author Américo Azevedo Neto in the 80s, and Kazaji Wamukuna, who, brought, who wrote the only book-length work on the genre in English in 2003, foreground the possibility of social t critique in the alto. This is primarily derived from the depiction of the amo as a fool, from the placement of Francisco as the trouble-fraught protagonist, and the pages as the ultimate source of meaningful knowledge and power after the failure of the representatives of European religion and medicine. These valorizations <clears throat> of African and indigenous characters and knowledge would likely have held much meaning for the slaves, agriculture and day laborers and domestic laborers who have maintained this tradition since the colonial era. Today, Bumbumel Boy groups are primarily located within poor municipalities of the state, including rural districts as well as poor urban districts which surround the city center of Sao Luis. However, more recent studies, as well as the conceptions of many of the performers and organizers within Bumbumel Boy groups themselves, today largely see this social critique as a thing of the past. The satire likely would have been more biting when Bumbumel Boy and other expressions of Afro-Brazilian culture were marginalized and repressed before their development as symbols of cultural pride and attractors of tourist income. Instead, Francisco and Cacharina's plight is framed as a myth, uh, a myth of the multiracial origins of Maranhão and Brazil more broadly. After all, <clears throat> the play could be seen as a microcosm of the interaction of the three original races, the African, Portuguese, and native, on the plantationist petri dish that Gilberto Freire posited as the origin, the origin of Brazilian national culture. 
Their status as mythic symbols could also be an explanation for the frequent use of decentralized depictions of characters based on their race, including backpace for Francisco and Cacciarina, and depictions of Indians and Kabokus that more closely resemble Wild West films than any actual indigenous groups living in Maranao. <clears throat> Besides this central myth, the boy is also a direct reference to the Maranhense reformulation of the Portuguese Sebastianist myth, in which, the, in, in, in this case, uh, the long-missing 16th century Portuguese monarch who went missing during the Crusades uh, in Morocco roams the, la the sand dunes of the Maranhense coast, specifically the Lençóis Maranhenses, which is this really beautiful uh, state park that's made of these undulating sand dunes interspersed with really bright blue pools of uh, salt water, the big tourist attraction. He, uh, <clears throat> he roams the sand dunes of the Maranhense coast each Friday night as an enchanted bull with a golden star on his forehead. Um, to give you, so I, I want to take a little detour here. And so this is, uh, I talked about Bumbum uh, Aboi de Maracanã. This is Mestre Humberto de Maracanã and his wife, Maria. Um, obviously that's me and my friend Fernanda, who is a dancer and researcher. And uh, <clears throat> one of the most famous tawadas for Bumbum Aboi uh, was written by Umberto. It's also been performed by Alcion, the samba singer, if anyone knows who is from Maranao as well as some other groups. And as just uh, a demonstration of, of kind of this, uh, this mythical aspect, especially the Sebastian Smith, I wanted to play it really quick. Um, unfortunately, I, have to get, I, I couldn't get the subtitles to work when I transferred the video, so I'm gonna quick uh, get out of uh, PowerPoint and use just v VLC. <clears throat> I apologize, I couldn't, I also couldn't get, I, I, sub, I subtitled this and I couldn't get the uh, um, accents to work. So for those Portuguese speakers in here, just try to bear it. Um, and uh, so this is actually from, Boi de Maracanã has gotten a lot of government funding and a lot of outside support too. So this is their very professional, a, a, a chunk I took from their very professional DVD. So. And then the, of course the uh, subtitles don't work anyway, but. I can just give it play by play. He's saying, Maranhão, my treasure, my homeland, I made this song for you. Land of the Babasu, which that's this tree, the nature cultivate. This palm tree, the natural palm tree, which gives, this native palm tree, which gives me inspiration. The Valencois Maranhenses have a, have a enchanted bull. It is the land of King Sebastian. The, uh, basically, that's the important part. The rest of this is talking about the foods and the landscape of Maranhão. Saying in June we have Bobo Mel Boy in praise of São João. The Amu dance, uh, sings and shakes the maraca. These drums make the ground shake. This is an inheritance given by our ancestors that today we cultivate to compose your history, Maranhão. Um, I should say, I, I wanted to include this specifically partially as a tribute because actually uh, Umberto passed away a week after I interviewed him. Um, unfortunately, he was in his 70s and been doing it for 43 years, been leading this group. So, uh, and there was a state funeral. It was a, it was a really uh, big deal. <clears throat> no, this is from their professional DVD. And he, all the, this, it's a lot better than what I, what I could have done. And, they, they weren't perform There were a couple groups that did out-of-season performances, but Maracanã was not one of them. But, um, but I did interview him and spoke with him and, and saw the... Uh, they have a little kind of a, a museum attached to their Seji or their community building that has, uh, that has artifacts, has past costumes, past uh, uh, um, performance items. <clears throat> so... <clears throat> All of these myths, however, increasingly have to coexist with an ever-growing sense of spectacle and celebration that is manifested in at least five recognized sotakis, or performance styles, with varying instrumentation and visual styles.